Hello and welcome to Design Chat, the best live design discussion on the internet. I'm your host, Ryan McGovern. On Twitter, I'm at Hoopajoob and at Design Chat. Every week we get together and bring some of the coolest people from the design world to, to you guys, the design community, so you can interact with them and ask questions. And tonight, getting very close to the screen and making his grand entrance is Mr. Luke Williams. <laughs> I love this slide action, man. Nobody's <laughs> ever done that before. Can you do it again? Can you slide yeah, it from the other side, maybe? About, I wanted to do this Popping one. up. Do the elevator. Do the elevator. you got to be looking at your watch. <laughs> you got to be looking at your watch while you come up. Hello? That's awesome. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to re-edit all those together. <laughs> it's like the major entrance. It's, we'll I'll, I'll slow it down, and I'll have the, like the, the 20. Uh, what is that movie with the monolith? The 2010. Da, 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 da. Yeah, 2001. I don't know. Oh yeah. All right. Well, we got you here. So let's let's talk, man. Um, so what happened was there's there's a show. Uh, going on right now, um, put on by two groups, uh, one of which is Firebelly. I'm not from uh, design. I'm not uh, familiar with the other one. Um, why, Luke, why don't you tell us a little bit about that show that's going on and what's happening tomorrow and how you're a part of it? Okay. Um, well, Type Force was a uh, an Force. idea thought up by um, by Don Hancock, the uh, principal from Firebelly Design, as well as Ed Marr, who. You know, to my understanding, I think he kind of runs and decides what goes on at the Co-Prosperity Sphere, which is in um, Bridgeport downtown. Mm -hmm. And um, those two came together, and I wanted to put on this show, and they invited um, 20 artists, including myself, to uh, create some original work or exhibit their own work. Um, all the artists are, are, are people who, who use or implement type to some capacity in their work. Um, they're not all designers. Um, some are illustrators, and some work with mixed media, um, do installations and things like that. Um, but um, yeah, it was, uh, it was one of my, personally, I, I, I didn't really know many of the artists because I'm so new to the area, but um, I, I was so amazed by the, uh, by the opening. Like when I, when I was heading down to install my work, I had no idea what to expect. And it turned right. out to be a really great show. Um, and yeah, and it's still up. Um, I think- When did you guys kick off? Last week sometime? It was uh, about two weeks ago. Um, two weeks I ago. forget. I forget the opening date. Oh, it was um, true. yeah. But um, oh, duh, but yeah, right. yeah. It from uh, from like seven o'clock to eleven o'clock. It was packed with people, and 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 I was amazed. A that there are so many people in the city that that care about type that much, and and B uh, when I made my way down to the space, I learned that it, it's a big deal to get there, and there's no train line that, get, that takes you there. You have to kind of hop on a train and hop on a bus and walk a few blocks. So it's kind of inconvenient, <laughs> but I mean, that made it even, that made it even more flattering that there was such a great turnout. But um, you need like a special knock on the back alley door. You got to talk to a guy named Larry, get other <laughs> directions from him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then you come to find out that you're on the wrong block. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, that was cool. And, and everything's still up. I think it's not like a conventional gallery space where you can kind of come in from like 9 to 5 any given day of the week. It's, um, it's kind of like a really special large space. And they're having like sort of a, I, I can never figure out what the best way to call this was, but like a second opening or, or a, they're having like another event going on there um, where all the artwork is still hung and you can come and Rick Valcenti and a few other guests are going to be there. Um, Giving, giving small talks. Um, I guess stories about their career and their experience with type and um, everything. Like and that's tomorrow night. Uh, that is tomorrow night at seven o'clock at the Co Prosperity Sphere. Cool. Uh, we're gonna put the link up in the, the chat room real quick. For those of you who have not been here before, um, we do have an account called Design Chat Links, which is run by Mr. Andrew Tibbets, uh, who will there he is. See in the chat room. Um, so as we're talking about things, he's going to post uh, the links, the URLs in the chat room. And then it's also a Twitter account. So usually you can go back to that, you know, uh, twitter.com slash uh, design chat links. And if you want to reference something we're talking about later, the link is there. Um, so a, a couple of announcements really quick. 
and I should just automatically include this in my intro. We broadcast from an agency in West Dundee called Samana Mason. Very cool agency. Check them out, SamanaMason.com. They're on Twitter. They're at Samana Mason. Um, so quick thank you to them for letting us do that every week. We love you. Um, and, and so how this runs, we'll do 45 minutes of chat or so. And uh, as you guys are asking questions during the chat and commenting on things, we harvest all of that. And we serve that back up to our guest, in this case, Luke, this evening. And we give you credit for those questions. So the fun thing about this is that every week you have one-on-one -on -one interaction uh, with a, somebody who's doing something really cool in, in the design community. So definitely check us out every week on Wednesday nights. Join our Facebook group. There's a Facebook group. Subscribe to us on iTunes and use the hashtag design chat because we love that. So, um, yeah. Real quick, um, BJ Heredia asked if they need to buy tickets. And no, if you don't, it's a free event. Just make it there by 7. And talk to Larry. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Start your journey at like 4.30 because it's going to be tough to get there. A little bit. There's a long line. So, all right. Well, so that's that's uh, Type Force and very cool that you're part of that event and, um, you know, a very elite community. Um, if, if you get the time later, uh, go, go to the Coast Prosperity website and look at the people that are listed on there. There's a link for every single one of them to see their work and what they do and where they're from. And book some time, like put some time aside because you're going to spend at least an hour going through all these links and seeing all of this amazing work. Um, it sure. really, truly is a very inspiring group of people uh, doing amazing things with typography. So if you're into that at all, definitely spend some time with that. Uh, it's very, very cool. And actually, I just uh, uh, Andrew reminded me, the week the, when you guys kicked off that night, I was doing a talk for the STA, Society of Typographic Arts, across town. Uh, and we were at Critical Mass. I was doing a talk about Design Chat, actually, that same night. So there were two, like, uh, you know, typographic events going out at the same time, which was kind of fun. And, uh, you know, just cool that, you know, that kind of thing, like to realize that design community is that strong in Chicago where events like that can happen concurrently, you know. So you've been, you were telling me uh, you've been here for eight months now. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your history, where you went to school, how you got involved in art and design and typography, and then how you came to find Chicago. Okay. Um, I've been living here for uh, coming up on nine months now um, and uh, doing my best to get into the, the community and get to know everyone. And uh, this, things like Type Force are really helping that. I want to I wanna kind of meet everyone, shake a lot of hands. Um, and uh, before, I, before I was here, I was in Baltimore. Um, and uh, I, I went to school at MICA, which, which is short for Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore. Um, and uh, I spent four years in the design program and um, worked a couple jobs, a few in internships there, um, uh, some of which including um, I worked for Abbott Miller and his team with Pentagram for a little while. Um, uh, he has a studio in Baltimore. It's a little low key, um, but it's kind of like a satellite office to the New York. Mm -hmm. uh, office and um, uh, there, uh, Ellen Lupton was a teacher at MICA and and a combination of oh, like, kidding. Be, um, yeah, she she heads the MFA program for design. Uh, right, she also right, teaches right. a few uh, sort of intro type classes uh, for undergrad students. Um, and so like being taught by her and and working with uh, with like Abbott's team and all that. I mean like. That was pivotal for my career, and and like the way I looked at design and the way I looked at type in general, and um, and so I guess I was I worked there. There I had a, I had a small uh, experience with um, Shaw Jelva Design, which was a small studio in Baltimore as well. And almost immediately after I started working there, I got a call from um, Under Armour, the uh, athletic apparel company, uh, mm -hmm. who are also based in Baltimore. And they had an opening for um, for uh, uh, a uh, apparel graphic design position, and so I thought that sounded like a lot of fun, and I started doing that. And I was there for just shy of a year before I came here. Um, but I mean, I had a—I guess I grew up in like a family of artists. Um, my dad had his own graphic design studio in the '90s um, in Maryland, and uh, my grandfather was an architect. Um, all my parents' friends were artists, so we were always going to like gallery openings and 
um, you know, art hanging all over the house. And I guess like, I don't know, I kind of just got into it from an early age and I didn't even look at it as design at all. Like, um, I guess when I was younger, uh, my dad would be working on like some brochure and, and uh, he was like, hey Luke, this is, the, uh, this is the lasso tool and this is Photoshop and I need you to cut out this pigeon on a branch. <laughs> and, uh, he put you in the, he hired you as a production <laughs> artist. Exactly, exactly. And uh, I started playing with that and that got me into Photoshop. This is like Photoshop 3.0 and uh, yeah. um, me and some friends uh, had like a little skate team around town and we would, I would always like make like logos and like get like t-shirts printed and this was my, this was high school for me. Um, and I never even looked at it as design. I didn't know any better. Um, right. And then uh, I started taking, I, it just through high school, um, I had a, I had a studio art teacher who was an illustration major for MICA. So he kind of was a big influence on, on me going to MICA. And right. um, I think when I first left to, to head into Baltimore, I was sort of half and half. Like I still didn't quite have a, a, a really great grasp on what graphic design was because I was mm -hmm. still into sort of the studio art scene as well, like doing drawing and painting, less painting. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, like I said, um, I, I had a course with Ellen Lupton um, sophomore year and that was it for me. And it was like, okay, no more drawing, no, no more of this. It's all about design now. So How cool. Very cool. Um, well, anyway, I have to so ask you actually real quick. Um, we we're doing an event in April. Uh, AIG AIGA Chicago is going to have a design week, and they've asked uh, Design Chat to participate. On Wednesday night of that week, we are going to be doing a live show from Columbia College with AIGA uh, um, college chapter from around Illinois and they have specifically asked us to get Ellen Lupton for that night and we've been trying to contact her and sending emails and that sort of thing and I know she's very busy um, but very busy. Um, Columbia College <laughs> has you know asked if we can get a hold of her so if you still have any contact with have a way to get a hold of her please please I beg of you I beg 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 <laughs> we need help I'll send her an email I'll see what happens Happens. That'd she's be really cool. Very, she's she's usually very um very good about doing events like that. Um so yeah, I'm I wouldn't be surprised if she'd be happy to help. But I'm not gonna. I'm not ashamed to beg. I'm not. <laughs> I'll, I will get down on my knees. <laughs> so, so please continue. I'm sorry, and I interrupted. Um, so you're at school and you have the class with Ellen Lupton, and and you're just locked in at that point. What when when does it really settle in, and when like do do you actually speak the words, I'm going to be a designer? Uh, you know what? I think, uh, I don't know. I guess, I, I guess it's sort of a, it, it's like a, it's a steep crescendo. It's kind of like you start to, you start to pick up your first couple design books with, with you know, whether that's required reading for a course or, or a magazine at the school library or whatever. And, and you start to you start to read your first couple design blogs, and uh, and and your teachers start talking about um, guest speakers at school, and you go to all of those lectures, and you start to see all this phenomenal work that they're doing, and, and a lot of it is like game changing work, and uh, you know, and, and it starts to become like like maybe maybe once you'll see a piece where it's like, I could do that, you know, like that that, that doesn't seem too out of reach, and it starts to become this this exciting feeling of like. God, I'm going to be a designer. I want to. I want to dedicate all my time to this. And, right. and from there, it's just, it's just downhill from there. Like I've got, I started acquiring like every design book that I could afford, and and just reading all of them. And that's all I did in my spare time. I completely killed my social life over this. But uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's 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 worth it if you love what you do. You know, so. Yeah. I don't know if that answers the question, but. Yeah, totally. That's kind of how um, I feel about it. So then, so then you got out of school and you got those couple jobs you're talk talking about, and you find yourself here in Chicago. So what is it? How is your you know sort of professional life going now? What's the type of work you're getting? What kind of clients are you working with? Um, are you looking at agencies? Like, what's your plan? Actually, um, when I was uh, when I was working at Under Armour, uh, I worked there 
during my last year of school. And um, when I finally graduated, uh, I showed my work at the Art Directors Club Portfolio Review in, uh, in New York. And, um, and one thing led to another, and uh, a, a talent representative from Leo Burnett, um, an advertising agency whose headquarters is here in Chicago, uh, saw my work, contacted me, and said, hey, we want to fly you out here. We want to meet you and talk to you. And, and that was like the most exciting thing that had happened to me in the last couple months. And, and I, you know, to be honest with you, I think um, as, as cool as, as working at Under Armour was, it was, it's a very uh, in-house position. It's, it's like learning about the apparel industry was awesome. And um, being able to sort of have a part in that was very cool. And in fact, my work uh, is, is continually being released with, with new seasons. Um, mm -hmm. on underarmor.com mm -hmm. or whatever. So that's exciting to see. But I was ready to move on and um, and I thought this would be like a perfect opportunity. So um, so I flew out and, and it was the first time I had been to Chicago and I was just thinking, this is so much cooler than Baltimore. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and that was the first thing I thought. And the second thing I thought was when I got to the uh, when I got to the office and walked around and saw everyone working on things and learned about all the clients and saw all the award-winning work and, and just thinking like, man, I've never even considered advertising as a career path, but hey, this might be cool. And, uh, and I ended up taking the job and, and that's what brought me here. So uh, mm -hmm. about eight months ago, I started working there and um, I've been doing that ever since. And, um, uh, and, then, and then things like Typeforce and uh, any other art gallery opening, um, small sort of pro bono work for, for theater companies. I, I do a lot of this stuff when I come home from work um, because uh, first of all, you, you're never really totally sure what you can show from what you do at work because everything's so, um, there's so much copyright going on and there's so many legal issues. Uh, so you kind of, you don't want to, you don't want to get in hot water. So I never end up showing anything. Eventually you'll see it, but. Uh, right, right. I, I always like, I kind of, I hate it when, when I see, like, when I go to visit, like, friends from school, like, I go look at their portfolios online, and, and, and the most recent work was something that I saw them working on in school, and it's just like, man, I, I just, I, I die to know what they're doing, you know, I want to see what you're up to, and that's kind of how I feel, like, I want to keep my portfolio rolling, like, I want to show you what I've been up to, and, and so that's, yeah. what, that's why I'm so dedicated to doing this sort of stuff when I get home from work. Um, so I'm kind of juggling those two things, and it's a really great... Uh, it's a really, really go, great way to see both ends of the spectrum. You know, small, small work, small clients, and then big, complicated procedures for enormous clients. So it's pretty cool. Um, and I kind of share that here, same. What's that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I I don't even know what my next sentence was going to be. What were you going to say? I kind of share that. I was saying I kind of share that same sentiment that. Um, we're, we're, a big reason why we do this is to break down, I say this all the time, if I sound like a broken record every week, but I don't care. We do this to break down corporate and, and uh, competitive barriers. So, you know, so because we all have these day jobs where we're doing client work and that sort of thing, you really can't show those things. These silos, at, at, you know, once you get out of school, these silos start to be, you know, raised up around us. And, you know, then communication stops and then the exchange of ideas stop. And then uh, innovation stops, and, and I think we need to find ways to vent that, to get around it and make these connections like we are doing tonight. Um, I think it's very important that we, we continue to find different ways to communicate. I think, you know, everybody, like your, your story is pretty similar, I'm sure, to, to, to people in this chat right now and, and who might see it in the future. Um, yep. When you start getting the design, you start buying all these books, you start buying these magazines and subscriptions you become just a sponge and you want to pull it all into your life and, and saturate yourself with it. Um, but then but then that's a one-way communication, right? You can read an interview in a magazine, but it's not the same thing as coming you know, to this place tonight and, and people getting to ask you questions about specific things that you're saying and talking about. And I think that's very exciting. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, and, and, you know, there's always, there's always the question of, like, am I supposed to be doing this kind of stuff? Like, is my company going to be that when they find out that I'm working on other things. Well, it's kind of like, you know, it, in a way it's, it's a risk, but in another way it's like, well, I need to do it. Like it, it's for me really, like I have to, I gotta be productive, I gotta be making something. And I'm always excited to, you know, I'm always being inspired by other artists work and, and just like, I wanna try that out. You know, I wanna try that out. I need an outlet to try it out with. And hey, there's this small project I'm doing. 
thing that I'm going to work on it here, you know. So I'm always excited to leave work to get home to work some more, you know. Right, right. Tell us, tell us a little bit about what agency life is like for like your day to day, the ins and outs of, you know, what your career life is is like. You know, the hours that are involved. Um, you know, juggling projects and clients. How hard is it? What you know? How, you know, what's the structure of like? Do you collaborate with people, or are you on your own in a corner? Tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, uh, I work with. Uh, there's a. I'm part of a team of. Um, ten people. Uh, it's a mix of designers and art directors. Can you pantomime for us? Uh, hold on. Trying to figure out where you're. Uh, are, you, are you squeezing <laughs> the camera? I squeeze your head. I squeeze your head. Yeah, right? <laughs> I crush your head. <laughs> He's in a box. That's amazing. I should do that box. again. I'm, do that again. I'm going to screen capture. Nice. <sighs> Love it. <laughs> So every Wednesday, huh? You do this every Wednesday. Every single friggin' Wednesday. It's, you know, uh, I, I got I got familiar with this when Chuck Anderson did his. I saw him talking about this design chat thing, and oh, cool! I did. I, I tuned in for a little bit for his, and that was the first time I'd seen this. I'm always curious to hear that how how people hear of it if it's by word of mouth or by Twitter, or you know uh, whatever. If you just stumble onto it, or you do it. If anybody does a search for design. I was just testing it tonight on um, iTunes, on the iTunes store. If you go into podcasts and you search design, dude, I'm like, I'm buried. It's like, like six or seven pages in before you even see me. Um, and I'm not sure how they do that. I'm not sure how they rank, you know, if you just search in a generic term, like who shows up first. I mean, you'd think uh -huh. that just by nature of calling it design chat, like it'd be within at least the first couple pages. But it's not. I don't know if it's like amount of content or amount of ratings or, or what, or amount of downloads, because I don't think they can track that. I don't know. But uh, what the hell, man? We need, to, we need to get some ratings. So if anybody's listening, go into iTunes and give us some ratings and some feedback. Don't, you only caught it for a little bit with, uh, with Chucky? Yep. Yep. Only, I think I caught the end of it. And then, uh, and then I, uh, I searched for it later on, and uh, I found the, the recorded version and watched the rest of it then. <laughs> you, you watched the screensaver version? You know what? I, did, I watched the it, I was at work at the time, so I guess it was kind of background noise anyway. But, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I did notice it was all, it was all screensavers. <laughs> we, had, we had a little switcheroo that night, and uh, when we were getting set up, we forgot to turn on the you know, never have the screensaver <laughs> setting come on. Right. And so we're, it, it, that's happening in another room, so we have no idea if something goes wrong. And there's no way we can fix it. So it's like, all right, well, I still got to put something out. So I, if, it's, it's not throughout the whole thing, but I show, like, I got permission from him, of course, to show his visuals. I went yeah. to his website and just pulled off as much as I could. And as we were talking about things, and, went, and I re went back and re-edited, I was showing his work. Very cool. That's the other thing we got to figure out is, uh, you know, it probably should have sort of a more visual component. What's going on, design, design widths? Because I tried to show, I've, I've tried a couple times to show, this is a projector back here. Uh huh. And I've tried to show, you know, websites and that sort of thing. And it, the, the camera is not sensitive enough to handle that. As soon as anything white comes on, it's like, it just like blows <laughs> like out. Like my all lights color. back here. Yeah, a little bit. It's cool they though. They're like, like floating kind of halo going on. You know what they actually look like? Are chat boxes like, uh, like um, uh, what's what I'm looking for in comics? Bubbles, text bubbles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you were gonna eat it. <laughs> oh, what if I could? I love my lamps. 
Thought bubbles. Well, tell us about your lamps. Well, they're from Ikea. <laughs> Two of them. And uh, halfway up the, uh, the stand, they, they bend forward or backwards, which is kind of cool. Um, surprisingly affordable. I forget how much they cost. I also don't remember their name. You, you look like you're, um, you're up on a high uh, floor there. Looks like you're raised above the city. What, what floor do you live on? I live on the 33rd floor, and this is a view of the, uh, of the South Loop and beyond. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Shy town So I'm, I'm, I'm very honored that you chose not to go out in a very Irish city on a very Irish night, and you, you just stay, instead stay well, in with know, us. I I'll be honest, I'm surprised that you didn't postpone tonight's event for Thursday <laughs> night. But, uh, but yeah, no, I was willing to, to postpone all that. I'm actually I probably going to head out have. after we get finished. Yeah, oh. yeah, I, I probably should have. Probably should have <laughs> put is, it off. This is that. actually, on the other hand, this is a good test to, to uh, you know, test your viewers. Right, yeah. I was just telling Andrew, Andrew. See where you know stand on their priorities. Right, yeah. It, uh, I, I have a pretty good feeling that we're going to have a low turnout tonight because of it being, you know, the night that it is. Uh, everybody's going to be out and distracted and that sort of thing. But, you know, for me, that's okay. Like, as we get more and more popular, I think people will make the effort to come out for the live shows. But, uh, sorry, uh, but that's the thing. It lives online as a podcast, man. So, I mean, anybody, for it's going to be on forever. Well, when you're 80, you're going to be showing this to your grandkids. I intend on it. That'll be my. That, I'll 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 make a folder called when I'm 80, and this this will be in it. Nice things to do when I'm 80. <laughs> right. I heard the word. I got to tell you, if you didn't hear me earlier, I love your your uh, your chat name. Got a few in here I've never seen before. Has everybody been here for a show before, or are they are they friends of Luke that uh, are supporting him and came early? Yeah, let me know if you're friends of mine. I actually don't know who's going to be here. <laughs> BJ Heredia, how did you hear about the show? Design Wits, I've, I think I've seen that. Mike Pino. Yep, you follow Luke. Kern the Word follows you on Twitter, Luke. Sorry about that, current the word. <laughs> <laughs> if I could write about cooler things, I would. How long have you been on Twitter, Luke? Well, uh, are you familiar with Destroy Twitter? Yeah, you know what? I, I was gonna, I'm going to ask you about that for sure uh, during the chat, but you can tell me a little bit now. It'll probably be repetitive for later. Um, well, it's funny. Hang on. I'm actually going to go to my Twitter page and see exactly how long I've been on here. But I don't know. And you, does it have it on there? Like, member so. since? Uh, not. I thought it did. I don't know. Probably, definitely over a year. Um, but, uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, Johnny Hallman, the guy behind uh, Destroy Twitter, um, when he started putting that thing together, um, he was, he, he friends, we went to school together, and, um, okay. and uh, he goes, hey, you know that, you know that thing Twitter, by any chance, everyone's talking about? Yeah. I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and a lot of eye rolling happening, and, uh, right. and then... And then he said, "You know what? I think I'm going to make this my next project to use uh, Adobe Air and make a, you know, make my own um, Twitter client." And uh, and so I actually started using it to uh, test out the bugs in his first couple versions. Right. And, um, I think in my in my little Twitter bio, you can actually see it says something about I'm on, on here to support Johnny or whatever. I haven't changed it since, but um, right. And that's what I saw. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, and then that thing took off. That's for sure. Sure did, yeah. He got he got some good internet press, and that, that was the first time I heard about it. Is it has it evolved at all, or where where is it now? Um, I'm using. I should get I should get Johnny to get in here. 
tell you a little bit about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't if he's know around. Let's bring him on. I'm I'm using version one point seven point two point four beta, so I don't actually know if this version <laughs> is out yet. But uh, actually, you know what? If you can email him really quick and forward him the uh, the login info that I gave you, and okay. we can even have him on video. Let's see if I can get him in here. Yeah, that'd be red. While we're waiting, everybody, uh, post what city you're in right now. Where are you guys from? Chicago, L.A., what's going on? Quebec, Pandora, very funny, Gary. Kissimmee, Kissimmee, Florida, Kentucky. Chicago, USB. What's USB? Oh, I think it's a I think it's a play on USA. United States of beer. The USB drive. Like I'm a designer living in the USA. Oh, okay. that's my guess at least. I just tweeted on the way over here. I saw a car. Um, the license plate was D S G N space B L D. My first thought was design bald. That driver has a full head of hair. Uh, and who designs bold? Yeah, I thought that too, Henry. Design buildings? Why don't you just put architect? Seems sort of a roundabout way to say that you're an architect. So in Illinois, if you're watching this and your license plate is design BLD, email us. Tell us what the hell that means. We're, who, email me at hoopajube at gmail. Champion's here. What's going on, Champion? Boulevard? Design Boulevard? Maybe it's Blind? Sure Could be. Blind. Yeah, his hard drive crashed. He had to go to the place. That's... Here, I was out the other day, and I saw a license plate. I don't know if you can see this. The I am is. <laughs> we like are from Thirty Rock. <clears throat> you know, I haven't I watched enough is. of that. Everybody's talking about it, but uh, but I haven't spent enough time with it. It's one of those where like, it's just like, it's not on my radar right now. So I'm in two years. I'm probably going to go back and start buying the DVD. It's a perfect. Uh, it's a perfect Hulu television show. It's yeah. casual. You know, you don't have right. to watch it from the beginning. I even started on the last season and worked my way back one season at a time. But it's hilarious. I love it. Uh, what's what's that one actor, um, the really kooky black dude? Um, on there. He was just he was just on um, Letterman. I think was it Letterman? And just just no 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 no. It wasn't Letterman. It was it was uh, John Stewart. And uh, oh my God, I've watched it like three times. I was crying. I was crying. Tracy Morgan. That's right. Tracy I was Morgan. crying just because of how ridiculous this guy was. Like you could just tell his wheels are turning all the time. He doesn't stop. He's just like, you know, running stream of consciousness. Funny man. Like one of those guys. Like <clears throat> he's just out there saying, <laughs> doesn't know what he's saying until after it comes out of his mouth. Right. <laughs>